Here's your money briefing from Monday, June 12th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. For a lot of people, the daily time commitments of work and family life leave little room for me time. But why do men win the me time battle more than women? Wall Street Journal work and life columnist Rachel Feinsick joins me to discuss the importance of me time in your schedule and tips for adding it in. So, Rachel, why is it more of a challenge for women to find me time than men? What I heard from folks was that there's a little bit of a double standard. There's this societal expectation that men's main job is to be a breadwinner. So when they get home from work, everything else is just kind of extra. And when women get home from work, their actual job starts, which is taking care of the kids and the house. And again, I mean, this is a broad generalization. It's not like this for every couple, but these are kind of the cultural messages that many of us have absorbed and that kind of feed into feelings of guilt among women, for example, and leave people feeling really stretched. Does this idea of men and women having different levels of ease of bringing in me time, does it have to do with what their career is? Not necessarily, because what we see from this recent Pew data that I included in the story and that helped to kind of inspire it is that even when making similar amounts of income, men still get about three and a half hours more leisure time per week. And that's true when women are breadwinners as well. Men are getting even more extra leisure time per week. So I don't think it necessarily has to do with our careers. Um, We've certainly seen more female breadwinners in the United States in recent years. I think it kind of goes deeper than that. So what can women learn from men in terms terms of fitting me time into their schedule? A lot of the men that I talked to talked about just going, just prioritizing this, recognizing that it's so important to get this kind of me time, this kind of leisure time so that they can be better fathers, better workers. Also this idea, I think that not everything has to be perfect. I talked to this one dad who goes mountain biking and he was like, you know, if I come home a little bit late and i I don't get a chance to start fixing dinner until a little bit on the late side. No one's going to die, you know? And I think that's good advice for everyone to, to keep in mind that it is worth prioritizing this, even if it makes some of the other stuff feel a little bit less perfect. So having a bit of a flexible schedule at home, that can actually help here. Yeah. Also having a flexible approach to leisure. Um, Again, this guy that I talked to who's a devout mountain biker, he doesn't have set days per week which he goes, which when we think about habit forming is kind of a frequent piece of advice. And actually, when I started swimming with a girlfriend of mine this past year, I was like, oh, we need to pick a day, like a Monday, that way we'll commit to it. That's just not possible for a lot of people that have really busy lives. I have found, and this guy that I was talking to also found, that actually being flexible, kind of fitting your leisure time in around other obligations because you're not going to not go to your kid's dance recital or you probably shouldn't, you know, skip your kid's dance recital. You're not going to blow off that big project at work. And so I think when we have unrealistic expectations, like you were saying, JR, like a lack of flexibility, this idea, I either do it on Tuesday nights or I don't do it at all. That's the wrong approach. I think we want to kind of try to fit it in around the rest of our stuff in our lives because that stuff isn't going away. How much does this have to do with the way people visualize what me time could be? Yeah, I think sometimes we have unreasonable expectations. We think this like perfect moment is going to come, you know, where it's total quiet and it's just going to feel like this relaxation descending upon us. And what I heard from folks, especially one career coach told me was, it doesn't feel like that, especially right at the beginning. You know, you might successfully carve out that half hour and you sit down and that to-do list is still running in your head or you can hear your kids screaming. But you want to just try to sit with it and know that it's a practice and it will get better and it's worth doing even when it doesn't feel like the moment is perfect because chances are that perfect moment is never coming. So what about self-accountability here? What kinds of commitments can people make to force them down this path to bring in some me time? Because it sounds like they may have to dislodge some habits that are hard to break. Yes. I've heard a lot from women, especially feeling like they can only do this when it's like productive me time. It was like this kind of, this is, I, the first few times I was like, no, that's not what I'm writing about. But then I realized that is how a lot of people, especially women see it. It's like, oh yeah, leisure time is the time when I'm networking or learning to code. You know, that's my me time. So all of that in mind, the way that you can build some accountability around this is first of all, pair up with a friend. Then you have built in social time. It kind of is a two for one. One. And I know with myself, with the swimming, I mean, I would just feel so bad ever bailing on my friend that I go swimming with that it's really kept me accountable. You can also pay money for a class, join a group that can help with accountability as well. You know, getting some me time, getting some relaxing time can probably go a long way. And so regardless of your gender, 
How can not taking time for yourself affect things like your life and your in your overall career? Well, people get burnt out, first of all. They're exhausted. They're not as creative. You know, they're not as productive. I think it can also be really harmful in relationships. People feel resentful. And what I heard from this one career coach was we think it's anger, but it's actually probably more like jealousy. Like we're jealous if we see a partner or other people getting more more leisure time. And so it's really important to figure out a way to take this to make this current pace of life sustainable. That's Wall Street Journal work and life columnist Rachel Feinzig. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. 